We've all heard firefighters know their way around a kitchen, but how do they measure up against other hall cooks from across the country? I was born with this recipe. Do you mind if I steal some of your ingredients? In this next half hour, we're putting their culinary chops to the test. It always comes out completely burnt. That's why you do extras. Something is missing. I can't put my finger on it. But the stakes are high because they're cooking for a cause. Our department has a history of doing a lot of work for charity. It'd be a real honor to be able to donate that money to them. $1,000 for their favorite charity is on the line. We've got that toughness about us. We're going to bring some stuff that's going to blow their mind. Our message to Saskatoon is bring it. We traveled across the country and found the best fire hall chefs. Our firefighters will be broken up into two teams, red and blue. They'll have 45 minutes to make an appetizer and a main to present to our panel of judges for a chance at the $1,000 donation to their charity of choice. But before they start cooking, we're taking you across the country to meet the contestants in their hometown fire halls. West Vancouver is home to Cypress Mountain, the local ski hill that welcomed top athletes for the 2010 Winter Olympics. But when it comes to top fire hall chefs, consider the pro football player and the pro chef. Its competitive charm meets culinary chops. My name's Nathan Jensen. I'm 37 years old, and I've been with West Vancouver Fire Rescue for one and a half years. My name is Julio Caravada, and I'm 46, and this is my 14th year with the West Vancouver Fire and Rescue. This is West Vancouver Fire and Rescue Hall number two. Uh, this is our newest hall, and we're sitting by old 98 here. We have how many members? About 100 members? Julio is one of the funniest guys on the department. He's well known for clowning around. You finished checking the truck? Yeah, the truck's good. Yeah? You know what you got to do next, eh? What's next? Nice. You gotta go clean the toilets. You know, Nate's only been here about a year and a half. It's important to enjoy yourself because this job can be pretty serious at times. It changes in a heartbeat, so I like to keep things loose and have a good time. Before I was a firefighter, I was a professional chef for 18 plus years. But I felt that firefighting is just a better fit for me. It's a teamwork based environment and it's also very rewarding getting to help people. He's got a real flair for cooking and it's obvious when you see him cook around the hall, you know, how good he is. Julio brings to this team a big personality, a really traditional Italian background and a love for food and cooking. In 1986, I got a football scholarship to Simon Fraser and was fortunate enough to sign as a free agent with the Lions in 1991 and enjoyed an eight-year career with the Lions. Biggest highlight was winning a Grey Cup championship in 1994. It was a big dream of mine that, that came true. Steps up in the pocket, dumps it off. So the linebackers now are spreading out and it's opening up bigger holes over the middle. I'm the color commentator on the radio broadcasts for the team 1040 and 1410. Having that connection still into the team is great. It's been a tremendous experience. Coming here and getting on in the fire department, it's, it's, a, it's such a, a natural transition because we spend a tremendous amount of time preparing and training for all sorts of different scenarios. And then when the tone goes off, it's like game time. Julio's got some traditional recipes up his sleeve. My mother was a great cook. I think I really developed the passion for, for cooking the food that I, you know, grew up with. You think we got a chance? You guys, best cooks in the department. Well, I got, I, I partnered with the best cook in the department. That's that was right. my, that was my Stop biggest. It. I'll be honest though, you like people when you're cooking to call you chef, just, just a bit. We're cooking for the West Vancouver Charitable Society. We're really, really excited about the opportunity to win and, and get some money for them because they do such good work for so many different people that it'd be you know, a real honor to be able to donate that money to them. It's gonna be nice to go up against the boys from Saskatoon because I know they're gonna take a lot of pride in what they do. Did you get the recipe? I was born with this recipe. Our message to Saskatoon is, is bring it. Bring your game, because you know we're going to show up. It should be a lot of fun.
Saskatoon is one of the sunniest cities in Canada with over 2,000 hours of sunshine every year. So it's no surprise it's home to two firefighters who know a lot about Prairie Spirit. It's the strong man and the Saskatoon boy. Hi, my name's Regan Simpson. I'm 39 and I've been with Saskatoon Fire and Protective Services for a little over 10 years. Hi, I'm John Kellington. I'm 29 years old and I've been with Saskatoon Fire Protective Services for five and a half years. I was born and raised in Saskatoon and a friend of mine got into firefighting and told me that it would be something that I would and built for and you know my personality. What inspired me to become a firefighter in Saskatoon here was I was looking for a career that was physically demanding and that I got to work in a team environment. It's just job satisfaction you know it's working in your community and actually you know helping to shape how the community goes. Heat often triggers backdrafts. Air triggers backdrafts as well. Are you just reading that off the screen? Absolutely. The reason I pick Regan as my partner on this show is Regan's an excellent cook. He uh, brings all the ideas to the table. Hey Johnny, all them eggs coming. Oh yeah, pretty good. Dad was the cook in the family. I learned from him. We talk about it all the time. We get together usually every week and big family meal and the first things I think of when when you get up in the morning is what's going to be on the menu. It's just a big hobby and a, a real passion and it's never going to change. I'm pretty much here just to chop vegetables. John's not just my sous chef. He's got some skills of his own too. Let's not forget about that buddy. I can, yeah, I can spread peanut butter like the best of them. Johnny, give me a little oil. I'm going to throw this on there. Sometimes I kind of bark orders a little bit at him, but uh, hopefully he doesn't take it personal. No, not at all. <laughs> I guess what makes 8 Hall in Saskatoon unique to any other fire hall in the city is it's brand new. We have an excellent commercial grade kitchen. Don't forget to mention the apparatus that we have to work with every day is top of the line, brand new and uh, state of the art. My family is everything, you know. I think that's pretty consistent for a lot of us. I have a beautiful wife of uh, six years. I have a three-year-old son, and we have a beautiful baby girl. This job has its risks, but it makes it all worth it when I can come home to them. Another great reason about being a Saskatoon firefighter is, is it affords you a lot of time off to be home with family. We chose the Saskatoon Burn Fund as our charity. Our department has a history of doing a lot of of work for charity. It's just a great way to raise some money for some kids or individuals that will need that help. I think it's just extra incentive for us to hopefully do well in this competition. How do you think we're going to do in Vancouver, man? Oh, no problem. We got her in the bag. It'd be way better than that team from Vancouver. We're going up against some guys from Vancouver and one of them's Italian. Oh, an Italian, you say? But I think just because you're from Italy doesn't mean you can cook. That's true. Eggs are ready. I'd love some eggs. Well, the reason that our team from Saskatoon is going to win against Vancouver is we're just going to make a better meal. Fantastic, John. We're delicious. We've got that toughness about us. We've got the ingredients here that they don't have. We're going to bring some stuff that's going to blow their minds. They're going to be learning stuff from us, I think. Absolutely. Up next, teams head to the Mila Gallery in Vancouver to put their culinary skills to work. Looks like we're up against some good competition. We've been looking forward to this for a while. Here at the Mila Gallery in Vancouver, our firefighters are about to battle it out in the kitchen to claim the $1,000 prize for their favorite charity. As I'm walking in today, you know, nerves are playing in my head. A little apprehensive, don't know what's going to happen. Cooking in front of cameras is a lot different than cooking for all those guys. I'm feeling excited and also a little unsure of what to expect. I think for probably for both of us, you know, a little bit out of your element and just the unknown. We're at Mila Gallery in Vancouver and joining me in the kitchen we've got John and Regan, Team Damaging from Saskatoon on our blue side and Julio and Nate, Team West Van Fire from West Vancouver on our red side. How are you guys doing today? We're excited. We're great. We're ready to go. Ready to go. They're confident. How do you feel, John? I'm feeling a little hungry. A little hungry. All right. Well, it's time to turn up the heat. Let's meet the judges. He was named Food Network's Top Chef Canada in 2011 has worked for Top Chefs Gordon Ramsay and 
Danielle Boulou, and he is corporate chef at chefathand.com and Canada's favorite celebrity restaurant tour. It's Dale McKay. Many know her from her successful show on the Food Network. So we'll start with the garlic and ginger. She's written two national best-selling cookbooks, Everyday Indian and Quick and Healthy Indian. And this isn't her first time judging on camera. She was also a guest judge on Iron Chef America. It's Val, the Spice Goddess. Mila was founded in 1899 and is the world's largest family-owned and operated appliance company. Joining us, the president of Mila Canada, Jan Heck. Well, now you guys know who you need to impress. Captain, shake hands. Good luck, good luck. There's only one thing left to say. It's time to start cooking with fire. Go! Let's do this. Water on. I get the boiler here. The last couple of weeks, we kind of been meeting up and discussing what we were going to do. Hello, West Van Fire. What's on our menu today? What are we making? We are making my mother's homemade spaghetti sauce with meatballs. Yeah. We're going to put some sausage in there with some chicken and veal shoulder. You got a lot of meat going There's on. There's a lot of meat going on. <laughs> it's all, about, it's the all about the meat. This is not a vegetarian. No, no, no. Vegetarian no. meal. There's huh? not very many vegetarians in the fire hall. I've heard, yeah, I've heard. <laughs> Your bruschetta there, Nate. What are you making? It's going to be a mixed bruschetta plate. So we've got the standard tomato, basil, classic Italian bruschetta. And then another one is just going to be a little twist with some prosciutto, some fresh mozzarella cheese, and some figs. If you can make something that's quick and easy and you can eat right away because the nature of our job is that you could get a call at any time. All right, Regan, you came all the way to Saskatoon to cook some mangoes for us. What's going on here? Well, yeah, what it's just going to do is we're going to make a coconut shrimp and we're going to do it like a mango dipping sauce. So what's your main? Our main is a blackened chicken fettuccine. It's actually linguine. We couldn't find any fettuccine. We went with a green for some color. You guys are about five minutes in. You're looking good. We could have tried to take it over the top, but that's not how we eat at the hall. We make simple food and we try to make it taste good. Looks like we're up against some good competition. I was just glad it was a cooking show and not a boxing match because we would have got our kicked. I'm noticing they were making real authentic Italian food. This is not the first time I've been around spaghetti and meatballs. They look like they know what they're doing. How's it coming there, boys? It's good. How about on your side? You jet lagged? We've been looking forward to this for a while. Yeah? Powers of B said you're Italian. Well, with a name like Giulio Caravata, what do you think? So does that mean you can cook, or are you just using that as a crutch? Look at me, it means I can eat. <laughs> I think we've had a lot of talk of mum's recipes all over the place, so I know, I know a lot of mums that aren't very good cooks, so I don't know if that holds much weight with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they have, like, Italian background, you know, for me, I know many Italian friends, their mothers make the most amazing Yeah, pasta, but I also know sauce. Italian moms that probably don't make very good pasta. Nate, could you do me a... Breadcrumbs? Yeah, just a hair more breadcrumbs for me, dude. Teamwork is crucial. We live and work in close quarters and have to get along all the time. Oh, look at that. The shell, there's a bit of shell in there. See it? Oh. You can get that. And that would have been the one that judges got. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Is this pretty much par for, you, for your department? When you guys cook, you guys cook all out, huh? We do. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, appetizers aren't a real common thing. Actually, it's become bigger because what happens, guys come in off night shift, right? They're hungry, so now guys are having a little bit of something ready. We usually use Doritos for that. <laughs> As my mother likes to tell me, the meat is gonna tell you when it's time to turn. I always think about, you know, what would my mother say if she was dipping that spoon inside there, or having a little uh, bite? I pretty much know what her reaction would be. It, it tastes just like hers. This is the secret. My mother showed me this. You have to put milk in the breadcrumbs. It makes the meatballs nice and moist. How many did we put in there so far? Oh, uh, it's at least a dozen. Those are big meatballs. That's a big meatball? That's a big meatball. You have not eaten at the fire hall if you think that's a big meatball. I've never eaten meatballs. At there are guys at my gym, uh, specifically Pete Ruffles. He would be embarrassed to eat that because it was too small. Three It'd have to be three size. times that size. Really? Yeah. So you got 20 minutes left. 20 minutes? I don't know, guys. Are These guys me? are cooking their protein already. You got raw meatballs going in your... How long is that going to take to cook? It'll be ready. 20 minutes there, Julio. We don't care if you're a CFLer here. So boys, I got an idea. Do you mind if I steal some of your ingredients? 
What do you need? Steel. Can I have some basil? If you don't take all of it, you can have some. Sure. Well, thanks, boys. My basil's your basil. How about that much? We tried to steal all their basil, but they, they, wouldn't, they, they, they wouldn't let us take all of it. We didn't rattle them. We didn't rattle them. It was, we attempted it, but it didn't work. Yeah. didn't work. So what's the rules of your fire hall? Who cooks? Young guys? No, the, the good cooks cook, and then if you can't cook, you do dishes. So do the young guys feel a lot of pressure to come and cook? Yeah, they do. Sometimes they don't. And you usually get a shot at cooking, and if you make something just awful, you're buying groceries and doing dishes. OK. So I'm grinding the pepper from the pepper mill, and I'm noticing it's a little loose, but I'm, I'm so wrapped up in the moment, I didn't even realize what happened. Kind of funny story here, Egan. So that broke off. There's a really big chunk of pepper falling in the sauce. I'm thinking that that shouldn't be right, and I look down, and a chunk of the plastic off the pepper mill fell into the sauce. Come on, little piece of plastic. I wasn't surprised. I mean, look at him, he's Popeye. You crank it right off there, you gotta settle down a little bit. I really feel like you're ignoring me. I don't feel like I'm getting your undivided You know I can't attention. walk away from that sauce, because if it burns, we're, we're, toast, we're right? done. Well, you guys have 20 minutes left. Okay, thanks. You see some smoke, are they burning something? The oil is really hot. Just burning it. Yeah, that's no good. I think the oil was a little bit hot when they put it in there, so I'm hoping they have some backup shrimp to uh, compensate. What do you figure, boys? You guys gonna make her? Close. The pressure is on for our red and blue teams. Good, let's get those out of there. Can they save their appetizers in time, or will they get burned by the judges? That oil's so hot, you could flash fry a buffalo in 60 seconds. The blue team is in hot water, and the red team isn't doing much better. That's why you do extras. Uh -oh. It's up to both teams to salvage their appetizers in time to face the judges. I'm freaking out a little bit over the shrimp. I would be worried too. What are you gonna do about that oil? So I turn the heat down and let it sit for a few minutes, and it's still not working. It was lucky that we peeled enough shrimp that we could throw those in the garbage and start over. It always comes out looking completely burnt and just awful looking, but then you taste it, it tastes good. They got a little crisp, but like I said, that was by design. You've only got five minutes left. So we gotta get her going here. We gotta hustle. I don't know of any way to make water boil faster. Got five minutes left. Five minutes. I hope mama's meatballs are doing well. Oh. What do you figure, boys? You guys gonna make her or close? How about you guys? Saskatoon Fire Department is always on time. Do you need more sauce on there? No. Some greenery going on top? Yeah. Blue team, red team, your time is up. It's time to face the judges. We're out. Looking good, boys. You too, boys. Nice job. Right on. All right. You come to Saskatchewan. We'll lift weights and eat spaghetti meatballs. Up next, what will the judges have to say? Something is missing. I can't put my finger on it. Even if it's, you know, a little bit burned, I'm good. Just burning it. Yeah, that's no good. There's a bit of shell in there. And that would have been the one that judges got. Blue team, red team, your time is up. It's time to face the judges. Which team will take $1,000 for their charity and bragging rights at their fire hall? Judges, a mixed bruschetta plate prepared by our red team. Nate, describe what our judges will be enjoying. What we have in the middle is the classic traditional bruschetta with tomatoes, fresh basil, a uh, touch of garlic. On the outside is just a bit of a modern twist on it. It's the fresh mozzarella cheese, prosciutto, on top the grilled fig or the peach with a little balsamic glaze. Really nice and fresh. Mm. Really, really. Is this something you actually make at the hall quite often or? We're not big on appetizers at the hall. Usually we go for the big, uh, the big meat and potato type thing. For special occasions. Special occasions, yeah. This is a very special occasion. Yeah. Today is a very special very, occasion, very. yeah. Presentation is outstanding. Really, you know, well done and uh, very, very tasty. That's what I want to hear. You would have been choked if you would have said anything else. That was really pretty. Judges, Mama Caravada's spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> Julio, please yes. explain yeah. what our judges will be eating. This is a tradition my uh, family's home. Every Sunday morning, uh, I woke up as a kid, and this is the smell that I'd wake up to. Very fond memories of uh, walking by the oven with that fresh bread and 
sticking it in that pot and grabbing a meatball. And Did you get in trouble for doing that? Yeah, she'd throw a shoe at me or something. <laughs> Those meatballs? Outstanding. After you guys had a meal like this, if my uh, house would ever you know, <laughs> caught fire, you would put it out in a hurry. <laughs> yes. Something is missing, I can't put my finger on it. It's not my coriander seeds, <laughs> that's for sure. It's Italian. My mother is probably gonna, she's gonna just say, what was that? <laughs> judges, coconut crusted prawns prepared by our blue team. Regan, explain what our judges will be enjoying. Well, Johnny and I made for you guys uh, coconut crusted prawns or shrimp. We breaded the shrimp with an egg wash and some sweetened coconut. And the sauce is uh, mango, lime juice, lime zest, some red onion, cilantro, and a little bit of honey. The sauce is really good. The sauce is fantastic. Really good. You have a really nice mohawk cut. So I, I'm going to totally ignore the burned coconut. John said to me, he said, burn that coconut a little bit because it tastes better that way. So. You know. you know what, it's the altitude here. <laughs> They're just not used to it. Even if it's, you know, a little bit burnt, I'm good. When he's saying that uh, the shrimp texture tastes good burnt, I'm thinking, you know, you're just being nice. It is a bit dark on the outside, but yes. I just push that around and, and the prawns cook nice and the, the sauce is really tasty. Judges, blackened chicken with linguine, prepared by our blue team. John, explain what our judges will be enjoying. What we started with was uh, just some linguine. I made a simple sauce out of cream, butter, and some other things. Then we uh, pan seared chicken breast in a uh, rub we had prepared. Salt, pepper, chili powder, cumin, and then we made a, just a simple side salad that's really popular at the hall. Tomatoes and oil and balsamic vinegar, onions. The salad was kind of, we kind of a last minute thing. Former captain I used to had made this all the time. And yeah, we don't really have the rights to it. I guess we, we really should have asked him before we made it. But I figured, you know, we can kind of make a tribute to him. And plus, it was a good opportunity to rob some ingredients from our competitors as well. I like the salad with, with it, actually, because mm -hmm. obviously the cream gets a bit heavy when you eat the tomato with the balsamic and stuff. It's nice. I love it. I love the color. I think it's great. The pasta is excellent. Good, solid uh, sauce. I like it a lot. Chicken is perfect. Good job, guys. Really good. I'm not really surprised they enjoyed it because we've made that quite a bit and felt good that they enjoyed it. Thank you, Blue Team. Mm. So close. Yeah. I mean, the shrimp, I, I love the sauce. I thought it was really, really good. Obviously, they were a little bit dark, but there was a lot of things in there and the balance between the lime and the mango. It was pretty tasty. Prisketta, mm -hmm. what did you guys think? I thought the balsamic vinegar was uh, very heavy. A little bit too much. Yeah, it was way too much. much, yeah. The meatballs, for me, they were okay. I mean, I don't want to, you know, offend him or his mother, but... I love the meatballs. They were good. He had too much focus on the meatballs and not enough yeah. focus on the sauce. Yeah. Mm. I love the other one, the blackened chicken. Chicken was done very well. Fresh little salad on the side Perfect. mixed in with it. No, I thought it, it was really, really tasty. Sauce was a bit gooey. Yeah, I didn't like that. Overall, not bad. As I'm walking up to the judges, I'm, I'm just thinking, man, I wish we wouldn't have burnt the shrimp. No regrets of what we cooked, and I think the judges enjoyed our food. All I could feel was my heart. It's coming through my chest. I just couldn't believe it, uh, that I was going to be that nervous. Definitely there's some nerves and butterflies at that stage of the game. Judges, you've tasted their dishes and have made your decision. Please reveal our winner. Presentation is outstanding. Very, very tasty. I'm going to totally ignore the burnt coconut. The meatballs for me, they're okay. Judges, you've tasted their dishes and have made your decision. Please reveal our winner. Good job. Thanks, Thanks job, guys. I'm ecstatic. I think we're both pretty happy. There's a number of different charities that we donate to. And anytime you can make a contribution, especially a big one like this, by doing a competition is, is great. We're, we're thrilled. There's a few errors I think we made that cost us, but I'm happy with what we cooked. It would, you know, it had great flavor. I think the reason we lost was because of the altitude. That's probably why. It's not error from the cook. Well, it's not us. It's not error from us. No. It's the Vancouver. It's Vancouver. I blame itself. Vancouver. Congratulations to our red team, Julio and Nate from West Vancouver for winning $1,000 for the West Vancouver Charitable Society. Thanks to both of our teams for participating. We'll see you next time on Cooking with Fire.